The total change up of tone there is just like nothing else I've heard. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Molly and in this video I'm going to be listening to the album Dissociation by the Dillinger Escape Plan. Now this is Dillinger's sixth studio album that they released in 2016 and it is also their final album as a band so I'm really really curious to check this one out and see how they're going to finish off their discography and it's also the last Dillinger album that I haven't heard yet so yeah I'm just really really excited to jump into this album and see what I'm going to think of it. All right starting off Dissociation is track one which is called Limerent Death. I really like how clear this song sounds, like especially that percussion, man, it has such an openness, like a big expansive quality to it. Some glass shattering sound effect I just heard. This song is just so oppressive and it's bringing all of this energy and then they'll just turn it off all of a sudden. Well, that was track one, Limerent Death. What a way to get an album underway, that's for sure. That one was absolutely insane. Just so much energy being poured into that thing. But I loved though, they would have these little breaks that were really atmospheric. There was one point where the sound completely stopped for a few seconds and it was so restrained. And then they would just release all of that energy yet again. And the Dillinger Escape Plan, with every album, they never failed to just deliver on the craziest dynamics I've heard from just about any band, but I'm going to move on to track two, which is called Symptom of Terminal Illness. There was a really faint effect there at the start. It almost sounded like a watch being wound up or something, like a clock ticking. <sighs> I loved that little chimey effect just there. I love these tones that I'm hearing. They almost have like a sharpness to the sound, if that makes sense. Very Deftones-esque just there, that whispered vocal, sort of a haunted quality to it. Ooh, I loved that ending, it almost had a fuzziness to it. But that was track two, Symptom of Terminal Illness. It amazes me that that was off of the same album as that first track, because that second track was very different, much more restrained, and I guess you could say melodic. There was still kind of a darkness to it though, like sort of a haunted quality to that track. I absolutely loved all of the creativity with the instrumentals though. There were all these little subtle effects they were throwing in from time to time that were really giving that track such a rich atmosphere. All right, moving on to track three is Wanting Not So Much To As To. It's kind of a tongue twister of a track title. Such a boingy beginning to that one, sort of a bounciness almost to its sound. Oh, 
All right, now they're changing it up. They're bringing in this more kind of dark atmospheric quality here. Cool. Now there's almost a muffled quality to the sound. All night I've been trying to reach out. Something I had in me all along. It's crazy. There's almost a beauty to this track now. It's almost like it emerged out of all of that craziness earlier on. Or maybe not. It sounds like the craziness is coming back in now. Do as I well, that was track three, Wanting Not So Much 2 as 2. That one did some crazy change-ups I was not expecting at all. That was like three tracks in one almost. At the beginning, it was just an unleashment of insanity with its sound. Just really crazy all over the place, very intense. And then about halfway through, that track really changed tone quite a bit. His voice became a lot clearer. There was almost a melodicness to it, a much more calmed down sound for Dillinger. And then at the very end there, it took on this really creepy haunted quality. There were some whispered vocals and it just had this really eerie tone to it, very atmospheric. But I'm gonna move on to track four, which is called Fugue. Ooh, I love that tone there. It's like stars twinkling. Again, there's such clarity to it. It's very manic. It's almost like something is short circuiting. That's what it reminds me of. Well, that was track four, Fugue, a very unexpected change up on this album. The first three tracks obviously had vocals and they brought a little bit more of that crazy Dillinger escape plan energy that I'm used to. And then that one was very atmospheric, heavily electronic too. I really loved how they had that change up though, where it was all of a sudden the percussion came in and then the electronic quality kind of stopped really, really suddenly. And it took on that darker tone and a little bit more slow slowed down and sludgy almost in a way, just kind of a heaviness to the end of that track. Up next is track five, which is called Low Feels Boulevard. That guitar there for a second was so abrasive, man. Such intensity to its tone. This is what I love about this band. The total change up of tone there is just like nothing else I've heard. Yeah, there's some distortion here on these guitars, it sounds like. They just have this screechy sound to them. That was track five, Low Feels Boulevard. I loved the jazziness of that one in the middle there with that sort of interlude that they put in. Very relaxing and like such a contrast to the way that track started. His vocals on the first part of that song though were just crazy. It's amazing to me how much energy and intensity he can bring through with his voice alone. But I'm gonna move on to track six, which is called Surrogate.
there's something about the tone of Dillinger Escape Plan's guitars that's very distinct. I love it. Like I can always tell when it's a Dillinger track because their guitars just have this extreme clarity to them. It's like this really sharp and precise sound. All of a sudden, now there's just this crushing intensity to this track. It kind of slowed down a little bit there. And now we've got some lightness coming in, okay? I love how echoey and kind of cold this track feels. Like its sound is very metallic and empty almost, like it's kind of rattling around. That was track six, Surrogate. One of my favorites, I think, so far on this album. I loved how chilling that one was. It was very cold and it had a lot of these kind of metallic elements, like with the percussion especially, I was noticing that. And at the very end too, it was kind of like you were sinking down, like the track slowly faded out like that. It just brought about such a cold, isolated feeling listening to it. All right, up next is track seven, which is called Honeysuckle. It's like they grab hold of you with all of this energy and then they'll release you for a second and then they'll grab you again. It's like this constant push and pull with their sound that I love. I love too how Dillinger not only changes up their level of intensity and their musical style, they also do a lot of switch ups on the tempo too. Like their tracks will be so speedy and then they'll just slow it down. <laughs> What did I just hear? That was such a crazy manic tone for a second. That was track seven, Honeysuckle. You'd think with a track name like that, they'd maybe bring a little bit more gentleness to that one, but absolutely not. That one just kind of ripped into you with all of this intensity. His vocals on that one were just unrelenting. It was interesting too, lyrically toward the end there, I heard something about rip into my flesh. And I think he said too, like it's suffocating in here. And that was almost the sound quality of that track. Like there was something almost panicked about the delivery of it. But moving on to track eight is Manufacturing Discontent. Content. I love that slight little echo they're doing there with the vocals. There was just some distortion there on the instrumentals that almost gave it this warped sound. There is such a playfulness with his voice and the way he changes it up so much. That is very reminiscent of Mike Patton and the stuff Mike Patton has done with like Mr. Bungle and whatnot. Just so much variety, it's incredible.
That was track eight, manufacturing discontent. Crazy dynamics yet again with that one, just how they were going back and forth so much. It's almost like you get whiplash listening to these tracks. And Greg's voice on that one really, really shone, I thought, in how he was changing it up so much. There were like those little flashes of softer melodic moments, but then he would just bring so much harshness, like this unrelenting energy coming at you. Moving on to track nine is Apologies Not Included. I love this percussion right here at the start. Somehow this track is filled with energy, and yet there's something very bare bones about its sound too. It's almost empty, like things are just rattling around a lot. I don't know if that makes sense, but I love that tonal quality. This whole album has kind of had that. That was track nine, Apologies Not Included. Very oppressive, very, very heavy with its sound. I loved the percussion across that whole track. That really stood out to me. It just had this really quick sharpness to it. And like I said, it was almost like it was rattling around or something inside this empty chamber. But I'm gonna move on to track 10, which is called Nothing to Forget. There was just a flash of violin, I think, really faintly. I love that infusion of the violin. Man, it's given me chills almost listening to this. Okay, and now the strings are kind of coming in in a much more gentle manner. Okay, I love this bass coming in now. That was track 10, Nothing to Forget. That one was incredibly layered. I absolutely loved all of the really, really subtle things they kept sprinkling in. And I really loved too how those stringed instruments came in there later on and they brought such a beauty to that track, sort of a melodic gentleness in the middle. And then all of that oppressive heaviness came back at the end there. But we are officially onto the final song on this album. So moving on to track 11 is the title track, Dissociation. Okay, all of a sudden I'm kind of scared now. I don't know what's about to come. By the last time in the car There's such a metallic sound to this one. It's almost like footsteps. It's like this really big sort of echoey sound I keep hearing. And this song is starting to pick up tempo now. I 
was just going to make the comment, there's something about this track all of a sudden that vaguely reminded me of Bjork almost, with how Bjork will fuse these really melodic, beautifully soaring instrumentals with these really strange avant-garde electronic qualities as well. They're kind of doing that on this last song. I love how whispered and soft these vocals here are. Well, that was track 11, Dissociation. That one, I just didn't know what to expect. It started off so symphonic. They were using all of those orchestral elements and it just had such a smooth, beautiful tone to it. And then all of a sudden they completely changed it. And it took on this really dense, heavy, kind of menacing quality, something almost like horror movie-esque about the sound of it. And from that point, I was kind of expecting them to go really crazy with the energy, but they didn't really. They kept that track pretty mellow and it had this amazing smoothness to it very relaxing in a weird way well that concludes my reaction to dissociation the sixth and final studio album from the dillinger escape plan just the way they fuse together those atmospheric elements and then all of that oppressive energy coming at you and then the more subtle like electronic things and sound effects they would sprinkle in i just thought the balance was perfectly done across this whole album track one limerent death was definitely a standout that one was just such a bang of energy to start the album off with. And track six, Surrogate, I loved how atmospheric and dark that one was. And another favorite for sure was track 10, Nothing to Forget, with how they were fusing on all of these really subtle things like the stringed instruments. It just added so much complexity to that track. And I'm kind of sad now, this is my last Dillinger Escape Plan album, so I don't have any more in their discography left to hear, but I definitely want to get into Greg Pusciato's solo stuff. A lot of you have recommended The Black Queen to me in the comments. So I'll definitely be checking that out at some point. And yeah, let me know if there's anything else from the band members that I should hear. But yeah, as usual, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.